Hi guys, George Donnelly here. Um, this is my new author vlog that I'm doing. I'm a science fiction author. I'm, I'm new. I'm new. I'm just getting started. I've got some crazy ideas. And today I want to tell you about one of them. Uh, I'm work, starting work on a series of uh, kind of short novels around the 50,000 word mark um, called Grand Pacifica. Grand Pacifica or Grand Pacifica, yeah. This is this is about. Uh, so maybe you can you can you know listen. Um, you know if you if you have the time, and um, you know let me know what you think. Uh, and maybe maybe you can even help me uh, name some of the characters, yeah. Because I I have a few names, but I, I'm not really nah, not really excited about the names. So maybe you can help me with that. So this is a story about a boy. He lives in Atlanta, Idaho. This is a tiny town, in the, you know, in the middle of some mountains in Idaho. In the year is 2093. Um, the world is is in bad shape. Yeah, this is a fairly dystopian future. And uh, the United States, as we know it, no longer exists. There's a reformed United States that's trying to, you know, get its act together. Uh, out west, including Idaho, and um, this boy, let's call him Heath, but I, I'm not attached to that name, he has a disease, a horrible disfiguring disease, and his older brother and his dad, his dad is a, is a colonel in the uh, reformed U.S. Army, um, he's probably a ranger or a marine, um, they treat him, they treat this boy, they treat Heath really badly. Heath is around between 16 and 18. In fact, when this, as the story opens, Heath is in a cage. And uh, his brother is taunting him and, and mistreating him and throwing rocks at him and throwing dirt at him through the cage and feeding him uh, rancid milk and, and, and hog feed. And, uh, and Heath is desperate to get out of that cage because... There is a place called Grand Pacifica, which is an artificial island uh, in the Pacific that has become um, the center of all learning and, and advancement uh, in the world. It is the most prominent free city in the world. There are a few, Shanghai, uh, New York, uh, Istanbul. These are free cities. There's uh, Mars One, which is tiny. Uh, there is um, a, a tiny little city on the moon called Luna, and Ceres, which is a little mining colony, um, you know, in the asteroid belt. These are the free cities. There's a free city movement. These are um, radically decentralized cities without anything that we would think of as government, uh, governed by voluntary associations between people. Um, it's kind of anarchistic. Uh, which is fun. And anyway, he Heath has to get to Grand Pacifica uh, in order to get healed. He has an invitation in hand from doctors there to heal him of this uh, terrible disfiguring disease. Um, and so, uh, but his dad hates Grand Pacifica. Uh, his dad feels that, that his mother, uh, you know, his, that his wife, Heath's mother, um, died due to the Pacificans. Um, and so Heath has to fight his way out of that cage, and then he has to fight his way to an airplane and convince a friend, uh, sort of a friend. He doesn't really have any friends, but he convinces him. He has to convince him to take him on a plane ride, a short plane ride, to, um, you know, Boise, in order to catch a, another plane to take him to Los Angeles, and from there he can go... Um, to Grand Pacifica and catch the flight to Grand Pacifica. So, um, and, and there's a time limit here. There's a time limit. He, uh, I'm not sure if the time limit is going to be based on age or how long he's had the disease, but, um, you know, the, the common wisdom is that if he doesn't get to Grand Pacifica and have the, the medical treatment um, by a certain time, that he's dead from this disease. Um, and then later on in the story, uh, and so in, in Grand Pacifica, he meets um, a girl. And, uh, well, actually, 
he gets there and they tell him, no, we don't have you on our list. We don't know anything about you. Sorry, no treatment for you, buddy. But anyway, he meets up with kind of the, um, by a stroke of luck, he meets up with the son of the de facto leader or spokesperson for Grand Pacifica, the person that the outside world considers the, the, the political leader of Grand Pacifica. And he offers him um, a little bit of, uh, you know, a place to sleep in his home while they work out the, uh, the problems, you know, the, the misunderstandings with the medical treatment. And there he falls in love with the man's daughter. And um, well, I don't want to give too much of the story away, but there's a war uh, eventually. I mean, he's cured, but there's a war. And he's forced to, to join the war as an aide an officer but an aide to his father and working under his brother people that he can't stand people who who consider him dirt less than dirt even though he is now has been cured and is quite physically able and quite handsome in fact and um, so he has to balance this um, you know his conscience because his family are committing atrocity, atrocities. They're destroying Grand Pacifica. And he has to balance this with his, loyal to his loyalty to his family, his own principles, um, because he doesn't want to be part of that. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. And, um, you know, that comes to a head when he runs into the girl again that he fell in love with. So, um, so who, the main characters are, of course, uh, the young man, Heath, his older brother, a real jerk, his dad, who's a colonel in, in uh, the reformed U.S. Army, maybe he's a ranger, maybe he's a marine. Um, let's see, the girl, the girl's dad, girl's mom, girl's brother, and, and that's a good place to start. Um, yeah, I think this, this is going to be a fun story for me to write. It's about half, going to be about half the length of my first novel, Lando Cruz and the Coup Conspiracy. So I expect to knock it right out. I'm going to be needing um, beta readers in case you would like to join my team. Uh, read the, uh, the you know early drafts, you know not too early, um, and and give me your feedback. Um, but so yeah, I could use your help naming characters. You know you can leave a comment, send me an email, me at georgedonnelly.com. Let me know what you think. Anyway, that's the end of today's uh, this week's uh, author vlog. Thanks for watching.